external range liquidity and internal range liquidity. It's one of the most used ICT concepts. In this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step on how you can use this ICT concept to your advantage. First of all, we're going to talk about what external range liquidity and internal range liquidity really is. So external range liquidity is a high and a low that defines a range. And internal range liquidity is a swing high within that range or a fair value gap, as that's what we define as liquidity. So right here for the first example, we see price have external range liquidity on both sides because that defines a range. Then price reaches for internal range liquidity, which is this swing high. And this internal range liquidity could of course also be a fair value gap. When price takes out internal range liquidity, the drawn liquidity now becomes external range liquidity. As price moves from internal range liquidity to external range liquidity, and then from external range liquidity to internal range liquidity. And we often don't see price move from external range liquidity to external range liquidity. Now for a bullish example, we see that we have external range liquidity defining the range. That means we want to look for internal range liquidity, which could be a swing low or a valley gap. Then price takes out internal range liquidity, which is this swing low. Now, where is the next draw on liquidity? That is the external range liquidity. As we know, price moves from internal range liquidity to external range liquidity. Then price takes out external range liquidity. Where is the draw on liquidity now? Internal range liquidity as price moves from external range liquidity to internal range liquidity. Then next draw on liquidity is external, goes from internal to external, internal to external, and that just keeps going until price reaches the main objective. And when price reaches that objective, we now want to look for if price is still willing to move from external range liquidity to internal range liquidity. And this may sound a bit confusing, but now we're going to go into a chart example, and that will probably make it a lot easier for you to understand. So make sure to watch until the end of the video. For the first chart example, we can see that we have external range liquidity, which is this swing low down here, and also external range liquidity, which is this swing high up here. Now, where can we anticipate price to draw towards? Internal range liquidity. And we have seen price range these relative equal lows but fail to take out external range liquidity. So in that case, we could anticipate price moving deeper into the dealing range. And what do we have within here? We have a fair value gap that is paired with the OTE. So in that case, we could anticipate this to be internal range liquidity. Now, if price were to move from this internal range liquidity, where is the drawn liquidity? External range liquidity. So let's see if price where to react from this fair value gap. We see right here, we get a lot of displacement above this fair value gap. So let's just speed it up and see if price could manage to take out the external range liquidity. And we see price does expand higher, taking out the external range liquidity. Now that we were on the four hour time frame, we could actually use the external range liquidity and internal range liquidity for our bias. So we saw price reach down into internal range liquidity. And when price takes out internal range liquidity, where is the drawn liquidity now? External range liquidity. So in that case, when price gives confirmation, we're willing to move higher from the internal range liquidity. We now know the drawn liquidity is external range liquidity. And that means we can anticipate price going higher. And that also means the bias is bullish. Now you may ask, how can we know if price is going to move from internal range liquidity up to external range liquidity? Well, we can see that by price giving us confirmation that we're willing to move away from that internal range liquidity. And you see that we have this up close candle, large up close candle right here, that give, gave us confirmation, which was this market structure shift and also created an inversion value gap. And that confirmation really told us that price were willing to move away from this internal range liquidity and target where? 
target the external range liquidity. Now the price took out the external range liquidity. Where is the drawing liquidity now? Internal range liquidity. And the reason I've marked out this Favela gap to be our internal range liquidity is because we saw that this BC, which is a fair value gap up here, got disrespected. And we also don't have a BC within here, as we see the wicks are overlapping the body. So in that case, this is the first BC that price is going to target from the external range liquidity. And that also means this is our point of interest on where price is most likely going to reverse from. And this is our internal range liquidity. And right here we see price steps down into that internal range liquidity, respecting the consequent encouragement. And where is the drawn liquidity now? External range liquidity. So let's see if price could take out the external range liquidity now from moving from internal range liquidity. Let's just speed up price a bit. And right here, we see price tap deeper into this busy. Then after that took off, took out external range liquidity. Let's now talk about how we can frame a trade entry using external range liquidity and internal range liquidity, and also how we can use external range liquidity and internal range liquidity on the lower time frame to define bias, and that bias we can use as our trade entry. So right here, we see we have external range liquidity, which is this high, and we also have external range liquidity down here. So now let's see if price could take out one of the external range liquidities. Right here, price takes out the low of the external range liquidity. That means we can now anticipate price move to move towards internal range liquidity. And right here we see we have a lot of swing highs, which is internal range liquidity. So that would be our draw on liquidity. And right here we see price takes out two of the internal range liquidity highs and respect them by the body and fails to take out this high up here. And where is the draw on liquidity now? This new external range liquidity which price made. Price then takes out external range liquidity again. Where is the drawn liquidity now? Internal range liquidity. And we see we have this inversion valley gap. That is also paired with this order block, which price could potentially reverse from. Then we see price taps up into this inversion valley gap, then moves down to external range liquidity, which is this new low we made down here. Where is the drawn liquidity now? Internal range liquidity, which could be this swing high we have up here. Price takes out this swing high. And something that I think is very noticeable is price respecting this inversion value gap by the body at the high. Now the price ran internal range liquidity. Where is the drawn liquidity now? external range liquidity again. Price takes out external range liquidity. Where is the drawn liquidity now? Internal range liquidity. Price takes out internal range liquidity or fails to actually, but still moves towards this Favelli gap. Now, where is the drawn liquidity again? External range liquidity. And this was internal range liquidity. And where is the drawn liquidity again now? Internal range liquidity. But wait, we see at 8.30, price takes out all of these highs. And these highs actually gather low resistance liquidity. Now that we saw the price keep moving from external to internal, and then from internal to external, it also gathered a lot of low resistance liquidity as we see. And that also means that the smart money concepts or the algorithm is going to target this low resistance liquidity. And it is actually funny how price reversed from this area. 
because if we go up to the four hour time frame, that is this farewell gap, which we talked about before. And what was this farewell gap? Internal range liquidity. And now where is the drawn liquidity if we move from internal range liquidity? It is external range liquidity. So now we can go down into a lower time frame, and base a trade entry on price targeting external range liquidity. Now remember when I said it was very difficult for price moving from external range liquidity to external range liquidity? Well, in this case, we saw price took out external range liquidity, but then an 830 news drivers then targeted the other side of the external range liquidity. So it really just took 830 news drivers for price then now to target the other side of the external range liquidity. Now we saw the price also ran this high up here, which was external range liquidity on the 15 minute time frame. So in that case, we could anticipate price then moving from internal range liquidity, targeting the external range liquidity, and then targeting the higher time frame external range liquidity, which was the four hour high. So in that case, we could anticipate price moving down into this fair value gap, as that's the only place for price to be traced down to that is internal range liquidity. We can also see that this is within AOTE. And right here, to the tick price tap down into this OTE. And now, where is the drawn liquidity? This external range liquidity. If we can just get it over here. So then, we can go down into a time frame and find a trade entry that will align with price going up and taking out the external range liquidity. Down here on the one minute time frame, price is currently trading within the 15 minute fair value gap. And I'm just going to delete that so we can see something. And right here we see that price created this kind of V-shaped formation, which usually indicates price is willing to move higher. And we have three fair value gaps so in that case, we can go up to the three minute time frame and see that we have a singular fair or sorry, inversion fair value gap. And I usually trade the inversion value gap setup. So in that case, we get to a trade entry at the close above the inversion value gap. We could put our stop loss at the slow as we don't want to see price take out the slow, but I'm just going to put it at a place where I think price would most likely reach down for and then close below the inversion value gap. And where are we going to target? The external range liquidity. And we see this makes a fine 3.25 reward ratio. So let's see if price can manage to take out the external range liquidity. And we see it does take a while but still price takes out the external range liquidity. Now remember the external range liquidity that we had on the four hour time frame. That is this high up here. And we could actually have hold our trade and have targeted this high up here and have still made a fine five risk reward ratio. And then see price take out that external range liquidity.